Ready, Mr. Tanzi? Here we go. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Let me introduce some members of town government that assist this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, attorney to the board. To his left is David Flynn, planning director. You are all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown zoning ordinances. And it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are seeking whenever possible. It's up to you to provide us with precise, accurate information so we as a board can make a decision based on the facts that you present to us tonight. We as a board must consider the five following conditions and they're listed here for you. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved in some other by some other means. Three, whether the variance is substantial. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And last, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Procedures. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. When they are called, please present your certificates of postings and mailing to Mr. Flynn. Then you will be asked to go to the podium where you state your name and address for the record and then proceed us to tell, you, tell us why you need the variance. At the end of your presentation, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak on your case, they will be given one opportunity to do so. And then the applicant can come back to the podium and answer their concerns. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning this case. There are three ways to find out about your case. You can stay after the hearing, but there's no guarantee that your case will be acted on tonight. You can call the planning office tomorrow morning, or you can wait and be notified by mail. We do have two adjournments tonight. Uh, the first one is case 17626, Moody Mart 4, Inc. That has been adjourned to November 8th. And then on the adjourned hearings for tonight, case number 17610, Panel Girls LLC slash La Familia. That also has been adjourned to November 8th. Was there anyone here for those cases? Okay. David? The first case tonight is number 17624. Gary Castaldo, location 137 New York Avenue, east side of New York Avenue, 266 feet south of Bowers Court, Smithtown, property zoned R10. Request variance to reduce front yard setback from 40 feet to 29 feet existing for an existing 96 square foot portico. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Gary Castaldo. My address is 137 New York Avenue, Smithtown, New York. Thank you. You're welcome. Tell us why you're here tonight. Uh, I'm here. I bought a handyman special a couple years ago. Finally saved up enough money to fix it. Uh, part of the problem was the roof. Had a couple of leaks everywhere. Uh, hired a contractor. We, we did fix the roof. While doing so, we decided to add a, a little roof portico over the existing patio. Um, and that was halted and we were told to cease and assist during the construction of it. Okay. Does anyone on the board have any questions concerning this case? Okay. No. Lanny? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this case? Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next case is 17625 Custodia Parker. Location, south side of Veterans Memorial Highway, 124 feet east of Turn Place, Comac. Property zoned R15. Request, special exception to permit temporary living quarters for parents. Variance of a special exception standard to have a floor plan that is not economical and practical to convert back to a single family residence. Variance of a special exception standard 
to increase the square feet or the, the floor area of a temporary living quarters from 1,000 square feet to 2,300 square feet. Variance to permit two existing 64 square foot sheds in the front yard on Ronde Drive and a variance to reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to four feet. To permit an existing pool with deck in the front yard on Ronde Drive, to reduce the front yard setback from 45 feet to 29 feet, to increase the height of fence in front yard on Ronde Drive from four feet to six feet existing. Good evening. Good evening. Could you state your name and address? My name is Custodia Parker, and uh, I'm the owner of the 288 Veterans Memorial Highway, Coma. Uh, I had a hearing here before about the continued existing use of my house as a two-family house, and it was denied. Um, I'm, I'm here for variance of the special exception to permit temporary living quarters for parents like mother-daughter. I'm also here for the variance for my six-foot fence. I have lived in my house for 30 years. And I always believe I have a front yard and a backyard. My front yard being Veterans Memorial Highway and my backyard, the Rondi Drive. It was only about a year and a half ago that a building inspector came to my house and told me I have no backyard, but I have two front yards. So I'm asking the variance for the setback for my uh, six foot fence and uh, variance for the two sheds facing Rondi Drive to reduce setback from 45 feet to four feet, and also for the above ground pool to reduce setback from 49 feet and 29 feet. These are what I ask for, and I hope and pray that my variances will be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone on the board have any questions? Temporary living quarters is for what family member? Yeah, because right now I have a tenant there, but he has to move by uh, January. I was given six months when they denied my CEU. They have to move out. So I'm, I'm, they say I can convert like a mother-daughter. That's what, mother-daughter. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. It's your daughter. Yeah. Okay. They're living with me now. They are living with me, you know. Because like I have that thing because for economic purpose I have the, my tenant there. Oh, I understand, but you know, the law requires that to be a family member and I just didn't hear from you who it was. So I was just asking for some clarification. Any other questions? Um, I'd like to put some comments onto the record. The planning department uh, prepared a planning advisory report as required by Section 322-81 uh, of the Zoning Ordinance, and we recommend denial of the special exception because it doesn't meet uh, two of the standards, and the property owner is going for variances of those two standards, but we're recommending denial of those variances because, because in part we don't believe that it would be fair to other people in the past who wanted less relief and ended up being denied in similar circumstances. We're recommending approval of the variances for the accessory structures. Um, the, um, this is an unusual property in that it fronts on two streets. Um, sometimes when a property touches two streets, it kind of backs up to the second street. Uh, there are other properties on Vets Highway where the back of the house faces Vets, but not in this situation. I suspect it was, may have originally been built as a model home in the 1960s and then converted into a full-time home. 
And back in those years, they probably would have had the models face the street. The, uh, the swimming pool uh, has been there, I believe, for a long time. I think a building permit was issued for it. If I recall correctly, the building inspector, or I'm sorry, the building director uh, had told me that a permit was issued. And I think in those circumstances, um, while normally maybe that shouldn't be approved, uh, and in a situation where a permit was granted in error uh, a long time ago, the fair thing seems to be to allow it to stay. With respect to the six foot fence in the front yard, um, we're recommending approval of that. We normally wouldn't uh, recommend approval, but it, we think that the circumstances are really unique here. Uh, they're not similar to uh, many other properties at all in the whole town. And I think the, uh, like everyone else, need a, a rear yard. Right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard in this application? No? Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. The next case is number 17627, Bill Wolf Petroleum. The location, southeast corner of New Highway and Comac Road, Comac. Property zoned NB. Variance to increase maximum ground sign area from 32 square feet to 61 square feet. Increase maximum ground sign height from 15 to 20 feet to permit red illuminated portions of a ground sign to be within 100 feet from the point of intersection of the nearest street lines and to increase the number of wall slash eave signs from one to two. Good evening. Good, e good evening, Zoning Board. My name is Darren Solotov. I'm with the law offices of Elovich and Adele, and I represent Bill Wolf Petroleum for purposes of the application that's been put in front of you here tonight. Sure, Solotov is S-O-L-O. T O F as in Frank, F as in Frank, and it's Elovich and Adele. E L O V I C H and A D E L L, 164 West Park Avenue, Long Beach, New York. Thank you. Uh, at first, I just want to address what I think um, may have been a, a glitch in the application process. And you'll see uh, next in your packet a letter. Uh, um, from, the, uh, from the zoning board that was dated August 9th, 2006, whereby certain variances to increase the maximum height of a ground sign were increased from 15 feet to 20 feet. And I'm not gonna list all of them, but the 32 feet to 62 feet and 20 feet to five feet, et cetera. That was done back in 2006. There are no open permits on the property. And the sign, uh, basically what we're talking about here is a gas station sign a sign that is on the corner of uh, the two roads that were previously indicated. And as the sign exists there, uh, it was um, changed back in 2006. So there's no indication uh, that uh, those things uh, need to be reapplied for, but certainly if they do, then I stand in front of you uh, to apply based on what uh, was told to the engineers as they applied for this application. Uh, I do wanna make it perfectly clear here tonight that the build my client is not going to increase the size of the sign is not going to change its location um, what uh, my client is simply seeking here is the chapter 32 uh, 322-71c which is the red illumination of the sign or to basically change the sign from its current state to an led sign and the 32269C1, which is to add one extra sign, or basically you'll see in the application to change the eaves from the, uh, to increase the sign of the V power and to remove the cash sign that exists, uh, you'll see in the photos um, attached. So um, to address uh, some of the issues as, uh, as set forth uh, by Mr. Benz today, uh, the fact that it is, uh, it's not an undesirable <laughs> change in the community, and that's predicated upon the fact that you have two, uh, two separate gas stations, one of them located at 621 Comac Road and the other located at 230 Comac Road that both 
uh, were granted variances in order to have the red illuminated signs, uh, basically the LED signs. And this uh, sign as we're standing in front of you here today we're, that we're requesting is uh, very similar, substantially similar to the signs that are uh, in the area. There's another one located at a Sunoco on 25A across from the Macy's. Um, there's no other means to achieve this goal. Going to an LED sign is an energy efficient thing to do. It is um, bringing up, uh, it, it, it's a, a positive thing for the environment and certainly uh, we believe a positive thing for the community, for motorists to be able to uh, more easily see the signs as they're passing by. Uh, we believe uh, or put forth in front of you today that it makes it safer to do so. Um, as I indicated in response to number three, uh, there is no change in the actual sign in terms of its height or anything along those lines. So um, we're not suggesting that this is a substantial change. Certainly there is a change to change it to the LED lighting, uh, but again, we believe that that's a positive change which really answers uh, number four uh, and number five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Um, there is really no difficulty here. We're just seeking to improve the property. And uh, that's pretty much it, and I certainly welcome any questions. Um, the red portion that's illuminated, that's the uh, price of the gasoline, correct? That's correct. There will be some, uh, that's the portion that is red, that is correct. There's uh, changes to the illumination of the signs as is proposed, if you just give me a moment. As, um, if we're referring to the plans, it, shows uh, more specifically that the red portion is the actual number or the price of the gasoline. Yeah. Underneath it, it's diesel, and that's in green. Is that also illuminated? That is correct. The diesel will, is proposed to be illuminated as well. In green? Correct. Okay. And um, I, I would just point out in terms of the uh, 322-69C1 application that the uh. fee power was just simply increased in size to add a separate EVE. Uh, in the past, it was uh, it said cash, but it no longer does that. They took that out and are requesting to remove the service center sign and put the Food Mart sign in place, in its place. And Thank that's you. the extra eve. Thank you. Uh, anyone on the board have any questions? Planning? The, uh, I'm just a little bit concerned about it from a safety standpoint, the uh, having red and green close to a traffic signal. Um, just, I don't have any science on this, but it just doesn't sound prudent uh, to allow that. Um, is there any possibility of using a different color? Um, so, uh, it, it, I think it's a, it's a good and fair question. I th these signs exist, uh, not that this is the best argument to your question, but they mm -hmm. do exist all over the place. The red and the red is the proposed color. Uh, that many of these stations are using, including the ones that I had cited from before. Um, it is set back. It is not, uh, it is not in, in close proximity to, uh, to any of the lights. And um, I have, it's, that's the, the first time, I think it's a very good question, the first time I've ever heard a, you know, a question regarding the lights maybe posing some sort of confusion with traffic lights. I've never heard of that being an issue in, in, in any other location where these signs already exist. Okay. I think that the parties would be amenable to potentially changing the colors if that is, a, is an issue. I do think that uh, the LED lighting is something that they are really interested in having. Um, but if that is uh, an ultimate factor in determining a, whether this goes forward or not, that they would be amenable to a different color uh, in terms of any suggestions that the board may have. As you, as you know, it's up to the board, but I as a professional can't be just a bystander and say it sounds good to me. And then if there's a car accident um, mm -hmm. and someone was confused by the lighting, um, who are they going to look to in terms of who said it was I'm okay? Hoping, I'm hoping you would give them my card. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. So anyway, I, 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 just from my standpoint, I would be cautious about that. Um, the LEDs, um, I would just ask the board that if you approve this, it's with the understanding that the LEDs are not changing the copy regularly because flashing and intermittently illuminated signs are not permitted, but LEDs are not prohibited. So in this situation, in filling stations, usually, you know, they change the price once a day. 
Um, so it's not like a chasing signs, chasing lights or anything like that, right? Yeah, 100% correct. Okay. It's not the type of thing that will change frequently, regularly. And if that, it's once a day. Thank you. Um, and you're, no, you're absolutely correct. It certainly will we'll be willing to abide by that if that's uh, an issue as well. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this uh, application? Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. The next case is 17,628. Robert Tinshirt, location, west side of Amapola Lane, 105 feet south of Sagebrush Lane, Kings Park. Thank you. We'll look through them. Thanks. Okay, thank you. The uh, property is owned R10. The request variance to reduce the minimum rear yard setback from 50 to 47 feet for an existing 138 square foot roofed patio to reduce the distance from any lot line from six feet to three feet and six to four feet for an existing 192 square foot cabana. Good evening. Could you state your name and address for the record, please? Sure. Uh, Robert Tinshirt, 16 Allen Paul Lane, Kings Park, New York. Thank you. Would like to tell us why you're here tonight? Um, just like he said, yeah, I just uh, want to request a variance um, to uh, the cabana is a little too close to the lot line, um, and the overhang is uh, three feet short of the, the back fence. Uh, apparently, it has to be a, uh, 50 feet, and it's, I think, 47. And the cabana is, um, uh, it's got to be six feet, and it's four and three. <coughs> yeah. Does anyone on the board have any questions? All right. Planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard on this application? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, good members evening. of the board. Could you state your name, spell your last name, and your address for the record, please? First name is Timothy, last name is Dominic, D O M A N I C K. My address is number 10, Amapola Lane, Kings Park, New York. Members of the board. Yeah. My property would be principally affected by the request for the variance, and I'm not here to object or to cause any problems. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I'm actually here to support the applicant. Uh, my property would not be detrimentally affected by granting the variance. I would ur urge the board to grant the variance. These changes, in my opinion, do not appear to be rather substantial. It doesn't appear to have any type of negative impact on the, the environment or on members of the community. I'm just here to lend my support. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> no. Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. Thank you. The next case is 17,629. Bruce Cortez. Location, northeast corner of Terry Lane and Ott Place, Comac. Property zoned R10. Request variance to reduce minimum side yard setback from 12 feet to 10 feet for an existing 184 square foot second story addition. Good evening, uh, Chairman. Good evening. Members of the board, Lee Reynolds, McCarthy and Reynolds, 7 East Carver Street, Huntington, New York. I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm dealing with a slight case of laryngitis, so I will do my best to be concise. All right. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm here tonight on behalf of Bruce Cordes. Mr. Cordes is the owner of the property located on Terry Lane, and we're here tonight seeking a minor side yard setback variance uh, for an existing cantilevered bonus room uh, over the garage. Um, the subject property is located in the R10 zoning district. Um, the first floor of the property actually um, um, holds this, the 12-foot setback. It's this one-foot cantilever uh, which overhangs, which creates a, a very small deficiency, although a deficiency. Uh, the subject property was Mr. Cordes's childhood home. Um, three or four years ago, as part of his mom's estate planning, he took title to the property. And in readying the home for sale, contacting my office, he discovered that not only could he not get a building permit, um, 
you know, he couldn't get a building permit as he needed this relief. Um, you know, it, it, his father, uh, we believe, put this on sometime in the early 1980s, and um, it was used as a, a bonus room for, um, for uh, Bruce and his brother and the family. <clears throat> so we're here tonight, um, again, um, asking for the board's um, discretion and relief uh, that we're requesting. I did obtain, as Mr. Cordes is friendly with his neighbor most immediately affected, um, to obtain, um, to speak with them if they'd be kind enough to write a letter that they don't object to the variance. I have that to the extent the board would like me to pass that up, I'd be happy to. If you'd like to. Okay. Thank you. So stand ready to answer any questions the board may have. Otherwise, it's, you know, our, you know, opinion that the, you know, the, the variance is not substantial and it minimally impacts mm -hmm. the adjacent property owner and we appreciate the relief. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone on the board have any questions? No, no. Planning? The, um, the clerk to the board called my house before I got home from work about a case and I didn't write it down, but I think it's this one. Um, I think the request is supposed to be from 12 feet to 11 feet. Does that ring a bell with you? It looks like 11. It does. So, so the, the, le the denial letter that we had received initially, um, I believe uh, Mr. Cordes actually obtained it on his own before he had come to see me. I believe it was based upon uh, an architect's estimation of what that variance was. Between um, that initial um, time, we had the survey updated, mm -hmm. and it showed that that dimension is actually 11.1 feet. So okay. the variance is from 12 to 11.1. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Thank you, right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? I have a motion to close this case, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. The next case is 17630, Charles Murphy. The location, east side of Three Sisters Road, 316 feet north of Harbor Hill Road, St. James. Property zoned R21. Variance to reduce the minimum lot area from 21,780 square feet to 18,610 square feet for a lot line amendment. Good evening. Hi, um, this is Charles Murphy. I'm are Warren you, Sawyer. Are you the applicant? Charles is the applicant. All right, could you uh, state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, my name is Charles Murphy. I live at 51 Three Sisters Road, St. James. Thank you. Now, would you like to, a gentleman to speak on your behalf? Yes, I would. Okay. Could you state your name, spell yep. your last name, and give the address for the record, please? Warren Sawyer, S-A-W-Y-E-R, 23 Overton Pass, St. James. Our two lots are attempting to just ship the lot line. As you can see on there, we put up an fences existing mm -hmm. that we both agreed. Um, my water meter has always been on that property. So when we put the fence, we decided to split the fence, but we decided to shift it so that the water meter would now be on my property. And then we kind of shifted it in the back. So a little bit went to him and that's what we want to just get legalized. All right, fine. Thank you. Uh, anyone on the board have any questions? No Planning? No comments, no. thank you. Uh, anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks. The next case is 17631, Mark and Michelle Donato. Location, northwest corner of Highgate Drive and Neal Drive, Smithtown. Property zoned R21. Request variance to reduce the minimum front yard on Neal Drive from 50 feet to 31 feet, 39 feet existing, for a 669 square foot, two-story deck. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 to 15 feet for an existing upper deck. Reduce minimum rear yard from 75 feet to 59 feet for a proposed 112 square foot enclosed porch, 636 square foot addition, and 756 square foot garage. Reduce the minimum front yard from 50 to 5 feet for an existing 6-foot fence on Neal Drive 
reduce the minimum setback of an existing six foot fence from the edge of the road pavement from 20 feet to seven feet. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Vincent Tremarco. I represent the applicant. Uh, Mr. Donato submitted the affidavit of posting and mailing uh, to David Flynn. As you can see, this is another corner lot. And as this board very well knows, corner lots are beautiful for light and air, but they make it very difficult uh, when you want to uh, improve your property. Excuse me, Mr. Tremarco, I don't have the affidavit of posting. What? I don't have the affidavit of posting. Oh. I hope I didn't submit my shopping list that my, my <laughs> wife gave me. So. Anyway, so getting back to corner lots, they're great and they're wonderful, but they cause a lot of problems, as I said, when you want to improve your property. As you can see, um, the first couple of uh, variances uh, have to do with um, uh, reducing the minimum front yard. As the board knows, there's always two front yards on a corner property. Uh, you get to pick your backyard, and in this case, um, uh, the backyard is the westerly portion where you see uh, the swimming pool. So uh, the first variance that we're asking for uh, is to reduce the front yard from 50 to 31 there already was existing, I guess, by a prior variance on Neal Drive uh, for a 533-square-foot uh, lower deck and a 130-square-foot upper deck. So that's, that's on Neal Drive. Now, moving along to the next variance, to reduce the minimum side yard from 16 to 15 for an existing upper deck, and if you look at that, that's to the adjacent property to, to the north. That's the uh, sideline uh, or side yard uh, variance. As you can see, the house is very uh, close. Even the initial uh, built house was very close to the, uh, that side yard. Reduce the uh, minimum rear yard from 75 to 59 for a proposed 112 square foot enclosed porch and a 636 foot addition, total being 736. And if you look at that, that's the uh, uh, proposed addition uh, that Gary Peterson drew, uh, which will contain a garage under or below and a master bedroom. And the dotted line on that uh, uh, addition uh, shows uh, uh, an enclosed type porch, a glass and closed porch off the uh, uh, master bedroom. Uh, the fourth variance is to reduce minimum front yard setback on Neal Drive from 50 to 5 feet for an existing PVC fence. Now, it might be a little confusing. It confused the heck out of me initially, but um, uh, we finally figured it out, and um, uh, that has to do with the... Um, um, uh, the uh, PVC fence which comes along what's our side yard and uh, the neighbor's side yard on Neal Drive and it's um, um, six foot high. When it turns the corner it becomes a, uh, a four foot, you can see the hatch mark line, uh, four foot uh, chain link fence that's actually buried uh, within um, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, hedges. And finally, the, um, the last variance is um, variance to reduce distance from adjacent edge of road pavement on Highgate from 20 feet 
um, to 7.5 feet. They changed that ordinance a while ago, and that's why we have 20 feet uh, from, the, um, from the edge of pavement. We're actually 7.5 feet. Um, again, if you look at the drawing and the survey that you have, um, the existence of that fence will in no way affect uh, sight distance for any cars coming around uh, making a right-hand uh, turn from Neal Drive to uh, Highgate and then uh, running down or driving down Highgate Drive. It's there for the um, um, uh, safety and protection of, um, of um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Donato, uh, uh, their child and their friends, um, and we do need a six-foot fence, otherwise they really would have no privacy. Again, the lot is kind of, it's configured in a way, even though it's a uh, corner lot, it still is a tough lot to build on. As you can see, the pool is, uh, is in the rear yard, but it's kind of a side yard too. So anyway, we asked the board for its favorable consideration. Um, we don't feel that the um, uh, granting of these variances will have an adverse effect on adjacent properties. Uh, the request, uh, again, is not substantial given the fact that it's uh, the corner properties and corner properties are always problems. Uh, the benefit uh, can it be achieved by some other uh, method? Well, I guess we could not put up the addition and uh, not get a new master, master bedroom for. Mr. and Mrs. Donato, um, but we asked the board to, to uh, consider again the fact that it's a, uh, a corner property and really there's no other way to do it. Um, would it have any adverse effect on the environment? No, um, it's just a, uh, a master bedroom. There are no more people coming to live in the house. It has no effect on uh, health department uh, requirements. Um, uh, is the difficulty self-created? Um, no, we were applying for the variance to build the addition. There was the small addition um, that we added on to the um, mud room uh, at the time, or the laundry room. Uh, there was a roof over already, and um, uh, the Donatos merely filled in the walls, so to speak. So we ask the board for its favorable consideration. I have Mr. and Mrs. Donato here. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the board have any questions on this application? No. no. Planning? I just have one concern, and that's the fences. Uh, the town board weakened the ordinance as it pertains to fences a few years ago, so people wouldn't need variances. Um, where these previously the setback would have been 50 feet and today it's effectively 10. It's 20 from the pavement. The pavement's usually 10 feet from the property line. So, um, you know, it, it seems to fly in the face of the town board's intent to, to grant the variances unless there's a compelling reason. In this situation, uh, offense and compliance would be 36 feet from the pool, uh, the one on Highgate Drive, would be 36 feet from the pool, which seems to leave enough, uh, more than enough actually, uh, land around the pool that would be enclosed. And the fence on Neal Drive um, seems like that if it were in compliance, um, that it would not affect the uh, the utility of the property or the privacy of the property. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Good evening. Good evening. Could you state your name, spell your last name, and your address for the record, please? My name is Yanni Pavlidis, P-A-V-L-I-D-I-S. My address is 16 Highgate Drive, right across the street from the Donados. 
Um, I have been resident of this place, of this address for 40 years, and uh, I have known the Donados for 19 plus before then, especially Mark. Uh, well, I, I welcome the changes that uh, they, uh, they are asking, uh, and I am in favor of it. All right. They don't affect, I mean, in fact, they, they always take care of their home, and it looks beautiful. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just Any? have uh, one or two comments with respect to uh, Mr. Flynn's comments. Um, again, we asked the board to look at this. It's really an odd piece of property, and it's narrow uh, going uh, north to south. So the only real space they have uh, for recreation would be that space between the pool and uh, Highgate Drive. And um, it's still seven and a half feet uh, from the curb. It's not going to have any effect, as I said before, on any sight distance for anybody driving or uh, uh, walking down the road or the block. And as far as uh, on the other side, on Neal Drive, um, Again, same thing, it's, um, it's the neighbor's front yard uh, on that side, and there doesn't seem to be any complaint uh, from the neighbor. So um, let them enjoy their property and improve it the way they like. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Marco. The next case um, was adjourned, and it's case 17620. Michael Picciotti, location north side of Rose Lane, 284 feet west of Brookside Drive, Smithtown. Property zoned R21. Request reduce front yard, I'm sorry, variance to reduce front yard setback from 50 feet to 40 feet, 43 feet existing for proposed. Thank you. 278 square foot roof extension, reduce side yard setback from 16 to seven feet, eight feet existing, or 7.9 feet existing, and total side yards from 34 to 30 feet for a proposed 224 square foot roofed rear corner of dwelling. Good evening. We, we need the How you doing? My name is Michael Pachati. P-I-C-C-I-O-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Uh, I am the owner. Mike will be presenting the case for me at 287 Rose Lane, Smithtown. All right. Thank you. Now, can I have your name, spell your last name, and sure. state your address, please, for the record? Sure. Michael Rubenstein, R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N, -I -I -E 1070 Middle Country Road, Selden, New York, 11784. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My client this evening wishes to change the roof of the existing house so that he could provide soffits and fascias. The house currently doesn't have either. This causes problems when it rains or snows. The, roof, the rear roof addition will be incorporated into the new roof line and a covered patio. It will not be enclosed. I have submitted a series of photographs, <coughs> excuse me, a series of photographs of the neighborhood, and I also provided you with a study of front yard setbacks, um, all showing that they are very similar to my client's home. Whether the undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood, looking at the surrounding properties, my client's home seems to be one of the older homes in the neighborhood. Most of the other homes have soffits and fascia, and it's typical of this neighborhood. We believe that the proposed alteration is small and will not negatively impact the surrounding properties. There are several photographs, uh, specifically number 309 and 311 Rose Lane, which have very similar setbacks and soffits to my client's home. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved in some other method, there doesn't seem to be an alternative to changing the roof line. 
My client is trying to improve the situation that causes water damage. Whether the request area is major as opposed to minimal, we believe the requested variances are minimal and in keeping with the surrounding neighborhood. I've included in the packet a front yard setback diagram, which shows that the majority of the properties do not meet the required 50 foot setback. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse impact on the physical and environmental conditions, the neighborhood is predominantly built up with one family dwellings. There are no wetlands or environmental features in this area that would be impacted by the granting of this application. Whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, the proposed alterations are, have not been constructed and therefore a self-created hardship does not exist. If there's any questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any questions on this application? No. Planning? No. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. And, and that concludes the hearing for tonight. Thank you.